close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing. And then just stay with that sensation of the breathing as it goes in, goes out. Let your mind settle down right here. You don't have to go off thinking about the past or future. Just stick with this right here. It's sticking with one object that allows the mind to settle down and rest. So you have to choose a good object, and the breath is a good one because it's always there. It's about as close as you can get to the mind, and it still be in the body. And it's also the force of life. So you try to breathe in a way that feels comfortable, because if you can get the breath comfortable, that's going to be good for the body, and it's going to be good for the mind as well. To just stay here consistently. It's the quality of consistency that makes this special. Otherwise, it just becomes one more thing that you jump to as you jump around the various things in your life. And that doesn't make much of a big change in the mind. But if you get the mind to stick with one thing consistently, then it can take down roots here in the present moment and be firmly established right here. And that way you can see what's going on in the mind, in the body, and deal with these things in time. For instance, when greed arises, you'll know right away even before it gets really large and overwhelming. And that way it's a lot easier to deal with it. Just little hints of greed or little hints of aversion or little hints of delusion are going to be right here and you see them and you can deal with them in time. And that way what could ordinarily be a big job is trying to overcome the effects of these things. It becomes a much smaller job. It's a really big job, especially if you give in to the greed, aversion, and delusion, act on it, and then you've got to deal with the results that you've created out there in the world. It's a lot easier where it just begins to show itself a little bit, and you can see right through it. And you say, okay, this is unskillful. I don't want to go there. And then you just breathe right through it. Give the mind better things to think about. So it's this quality of staying consistently right here that makes a big difference. So try to develop that stick to itiveness and then the sense of loyalty to your meditation that keeps you here. We've come today to make merit for the new year and also to make merit for Grandma, who passed away on just about this day a couple years back. And people don't, or no, they don't like thinking about death at the beginning of the new year. They like to th hear about nice things. But you have to remember, there's, there's death, but there's also things in the world that don't die. You want to hold on to that. And the memory of people who've, been in, who've lived in the past and have gone on to the next life, they still, t they still leave good memories behind. Good, good examples behind. And that's something you want to make sure it doesn't die. So this quality of consistency is one of them. Grandma was a really consistent person. She made up her mind she wanted to do something, she'd stick with it and see it all the way through. So that's something you want to look at your life. Do you have that quality as well? What can you do to develop it too? Because when you're consistent like this, and she was able to take large jobs and make them small, make it seem like it was just effortless. You ran the kitchen down there and pretty much ran the monastery in lots of ways. Now she's passed on, but she left behind a good example. So you want to make sure how you know how you can make her qualities live on. And if you think about grandma, you can think about other people who've lived in the past who've been good examples. You want to make sure their their qualities live on in this world. You don't want them to die with them. In other words, that means you have to train your mind to develop those qualities as well. And that's a good way of looking at the new year and thinking about what are the good things you want to preserve from the past and bring into the new year, because otherwise they, they, they just die away, die away. And that kind of death is not is a lot more to be lamented than the death of people. People die and then they're reborn. They die and then reborn. They keep coming back, coming back, coming back. But if good qualities die, how are they going to come back unless you make a big effort? So as long as you've got some seeds of good qualities in you, you try to develop them, keep them going, and be as consistent as possible as you can in maintaining those good qualities in your life. So when you reach the new year, you think about all the good new things that are going to happen, but you also have to think about the good things from the past that you make, want to make sure don't die, and that you carry into the future with you. We've got the Dharma, we've got the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. We're going to carry their memory into the future as well. And how do you do that? By taking them as examples. What are the good qualities of the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha? Yeah, you try to imbue them, take those and imbue your thoughts and words and deeds in those good qualities, and that's what keeps them alive. So at the beginning of the new year, try to think about this. So what are the good things in the past you want to make sure don't die out as we go into 2013 or 2556, however you want to count the years. That way you carry the goodness from the past. You can, you can let go of the bad things from the past. Just let those die. Keep the good things. Keep those going as long as you can. And that becomes a gift to yourself, the gift to the people around you, and a gift to the next generation. 
as they see these good qualities. I mean, all too often I've seen examples where we've had families come here. There was a walking meditation path we were going to do one time, and there was the grandma, and there were the parents, and there were the children. And it was the grandma who was doing all the work, and she was stronger than the children, and the parents was uh, than the than the than the parents, and then the parents were stronger than the children. That's a sad commentary on what's what we have facing us in the future if people get less. Diligent, if they just can't put themselves to a job and stick with it, then this, the world is in a really bad shape. But if we can take the good qualities of the previous generations and keep them going, okay, then there's hope for the world. 